So when Phoebe suggested that my father and I should not go to Margaret's, I was quite willing to agree with that notion. When Phoebe's mother came home from running all her errands, she looked terrible. She was sniffling and blowing her nose. Phoebe asked her if she was sick. Mrs. Winterbottom looked at Phoebe and then straight at me. No, she said, I think I have an allergy. Phoebe said that they were going to do our homework upstairs. I said, maybe we should have helped her put away the groceries. She likes to do that all by herself, Phoebe said. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure, Phoebe said. I've lived with her my whole life, haven't I? I asked Phoebe if her mother really had allergies. Well, gosh, Sal, if she says she does, then I guess she does. She's not the sort of person to lie. Maybe something is wrong. Maybe something is bothering her. I don't know. I, don't you think she would say so then? Maybe she's afraid to, I said. I wonder why it was so easy for me to see that Phoebe's mother was worried and miserable, but Phoebe couldn't see it. Or, if she could, she was ignoring it. Maybe she didn't want want to notice. Maybe it was too frightening, the thing. I started wondering if this was how it had been with my mother. Were there things I didn't notice? Phoebe sat quite straight in her chair and said, Sal, I can assure you that my mother would not be afraid to say if something was bothering her. What on earth would she have to be afraid of? We are not exactly a family of lunatics, you know. Later that afternoon, when Phoebe and I went downstairs, Mrs. Winterbottom was talking with prudence. Do you think I lead a tiny life? She was asking. How do you mean? Prudence asked as she filed her nails. Do we have any nail polish remover? Phoebe's mother retrieved a bottle of nail polish remover from the bathroom. What I was wondering, Phoebe's mother said, was if you think... She stopped talking when she saw me and Phoebe. Oh, Prudence said to her mother, before I forget, do you think you could sew up the hem on my brown skirt so I could wear it tomorrow? Oh, please. Prudence tilted her head to the side and tugged at her hair in exactly the same way Phoebe does. Prudence smooshed up her mouth with into a little pout. In the kitchen, I said to Phoebe, doesn't Prudence know how to sew? Of course she does, Phoebe said. Why do you ask? I was just wondering why she doesn't sew her own skirt. Sal, Phoebe said, if you don't mind my saying so, I think you're becoming ever so critical. Before I left Phoebe's that day, Mrs. Winterbottom handed Prudence her brown skirt with the newly sewn hem. And all the way home, I wondered about Mrs. Winterbottom and what she meant about living a tiny life. If she didn't like all that baking and cleaning and jumping up to get bottles of nail polish remover and sewing hems, why did she do that? Why didn't she tell them to do some of these things themselves? Maybe she was afraid there would be nothing left for her to do. There would be no need for her and she would become invisible and no one would notice. When I got home that day, my father handed me a package. It's from Margaret, he said. What is it? I don't know. Why don't you open it? Inside was a blue sweater. I put it back in the box and went upstairs. My father followed me. Sal, Sal, do you like it? I don't want it, I said. She was just trying to, she likes you. I don't care if she likes me or not, I said. My father stood there looking around the room. I want to tell you something about Margaret, he said. Well, I don't want to hear it. I said, I was feeling so completely ordinary. My, when my father left the room, I could still hear my own voice saying, I don't want to hear it, and I knew that I sounded exactly like Phoebe.